Welcome back to Holidays with Our Heroes here on Eco Ask Why. As you know by now, we're getting close to Christmas and these hero episodes have been amazing. Hoping you're enjoying hearing all the inspirational stories. And there's a big surprise coming up very soon and you do not want to miss it the week of Christmas. Now, in this episode, I sat down with Sandy DeSouza, and you may remember Sandy back from episode 139, where he talked about CMMS, and he really unpacked a lot in that episode, and what I remember so much about Sandy working with him in that episode and this hero conversation was his energy. He was always smiling. It was just a fun conversation. He loves what he does. He's passionate about it. He's knowledgeable, and you put those two things together with, with passion meets expertise, wonderful things happen. So you're going to hear his hero story, and I can't wait for you to just to be inspired by everything Sandy brings. From the war stories, now those stories are coming in to us, and they are pretty incredible. I know you're going to love hearing these war stories when we roll them out, and it's not too late. If you got one, send it in. There's links in the show notes. Go check that out. Hook us up. We, we really want that. We want to inspire people. We, may, we want to entertain people, too. So maybe it's a funny story. That's okay. Give it to us. We'd love to showcase it. Now it's time to get some insight into Sandy DeZoza and his amazing journey. Cue the music. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero conversation I'm very excited to have with me, Mr. Sandy D'Souza, who is the Director of Channel Partnerships at Fix Software. So welcome, Sandy. Thanks so much, Chris. Really excited to be here. Thanks for having me. I'm very excited to have you, man. How, how are you doing today? Are you having a good day so far? Good day. You know, it was uh, sunny here this morning in Pittsburgh, a little bit of clouds and thunderstorms rolling through, but hey, hard to complain. It's June, right? It's uh, summertime. There you go. I was, and I was going to ask you where you were. So you're in Pittsburgh. That's where you're located. Okay. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Great city. Nice, nice. Yeah. I, I've been there before. It's a wonderful city. I went to the uh, uh, to some downtown area there in Pittsburgh where the Pirates play and got this, got to walk through that, that district. It's just a really cool vibes in that city, man. Yeah, it's nice. You know, underrated. You got the rivers, you got some trees, you got some hills, um, yeah. you know, kind of uh, all the good stuff in life, at least as far as I'm concerned. For sure. For sure. Well, excited to have you here, Sandy. Maybe get us started, but give us a little bit about your journey to where you're at right now. Yeah, well, uh, you know, great, great question, right? So um, little known fact, born and raised in Toronto, Canada, um, went to uh, university at Wilfrid Laurier University, did a business degree out there. Spent the bulk of my career, at least thus far, um, at BlackBerry. So spent about 10 years. Um, interesting uh, interesting time, right? I was there for kind of the meteoric rise of the organization to, you know, kind of uh, you know, getting a little bit of uh, disruption, certainly from uh, other players in, in the category over, over time. But what a journey, right? Like you just learn so much about business and about strategy and about technology and channels and, um, you know, great ride, wouldn't change it for anything. Um, fast forward, you know, 2017, um, joined Fix Software, um, you know, small software startup out of, uh, out of Toronto. Um, I think I was employee number 40, 45, something like that. And, uh, you know, been there for uh, four years and um, just got acquired by Rockwell Automation back in December of 2020. So uh, incredible ride, uh, incredible growth. And, uh, yeah, gosh, I mean, the learnings along the journey have been tremendous. And of course, you know, multifaceted in many different areas. So um, great ride. And uh, the best part is it's not it's not done. We got got a lot more uh, good stuff going on here. Nice. So you, you so you were in the 40s, you said, for the uh, fixed software. How many people work at Fix? Yeah, we got 200 at Fix. Um, you know, in the context of Rockwell, I think Rockwell, what do they say? It's 23,000. So we're still, you know, kind of that tiny fish in a massive pond. But, uh, um, you know, it's been it's been tremendous. Like, uh, you know, what a great organization to uh, to be a part of. And, you know, what uh, what great growth opportunities, both uh, for the business, but also, you know, certainly personally to, you know, get to learn from so many great people. Yeah, it's uh, it's really great. That is great. That's great. I mean, for sure. And from coming from Can from Toronto there. So uh, we'll get to this a little bit later. But are you more are you a Toronto sports fan or Pittsburgh now? 
Oh, I don't know. I, I, I got to be careful with that one. Right. Yeah. I feel like, uh, I feel like somebody is, somebody's going to be mad at me down the end of this. Right. But, uh, I guess, uh, you know, old habits die hard, right? Like, uh, you know, uh, always a Maple Leafs fan, uh, as much as I hate to admit that these days, but of course, you know, my, my Raptors, uh, won, uh, won a championship a couple of years ago and, uh, you know, Blue Jays, uh, I've always had, uh, you know, a decent team. So, you know, gotta, gotta keep my, uh, my Toronto loyalties, I suppose. I hear you. I hear you. So hopefully I didn't get you in any trouble there, but I uh, appreciate your honesty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, how about this? I mean, you, you've had such uh, experience helping industry and seeing things change. What do you see as some of the biggest challenges in the future? Yeah, it's a good, it's a good question, right? I, you know, I guess I'll, I'll start by saying, you know, gosh, like I'm still learning about a lot about industry, right? Like I spent, you know, 10 years at BlackBerry and, uh, you know, been at Fix since 2017. And uh, to me, it's just so fascinating talking to customers and people that have been in the industry for decades um, to, you know, kind of walk me through their journey and, you know, kind of how they run their business and how technology has changed their business and how technology continues to impact their business. And of course, you know, I'm a, I'm a technology guy, you know, certainly on the business side of things, but, um, you know, learning about kind of some of these areas where companies have had great success, some areas where they've had challenges, you know, to me, I, you know, if I had to sum it up and I like to think, you know, big, broad picture, it's the change management. Like, you know, there's so many great things happening and great new technologies available and software's changed so much. The question is, you know, how do you harness all that? And how do you ultimately, you know, use, use the tech to make an impact? And I think that's the biggest thing. And whoever figures that out, I guess, is going to, you know, do, do really well for themselves. And, you know, it's interesting, like the, the customers and the companies we talk to, the champions at those organizations that do well, they've really, you know, if, again, if I had to like abstract what they do really well, they figured out how to take these massive companies with complex operations and introduce new new ideas and really simplify things and do it in a way where you know they kind of lead change and help people and you know I guess have that right you know empathy towards other people to you know build success. So I don't know. I think that's the biggest challenge. I think the folks that figure out how to you know lead that change are going to be successful. So I'm still I'm still trying to learn and figure it out myself, but. Uh, you know, I think, I think that's where it's at. You're so true. I mean, change management is so hard, so hard, you know, and, and one thing, Sandy, I, I'm curious on your, your advice here. We try to help people learn about industry and, and want to pursue a career, right. And, and, and down, down a path that ultimately is going to align with stuff that, that you support. So to someone who's listening right now, you want to give them some career guidance, maybe to, to pursue, pursue a path like towards fix. What, what advice would you give them? Oh, you know, it's uh, I can give lots of uh, lots of advice. I you know don't know how, how much of it's actually going to be good, but you know I think what's always served me well is you know tr try to be curious and and you know listen and learn because you know I've been you know kind of involved kind of you know certainly on the software side in, in industry for the last few years and you know I'm learning so much stuff I didn't know and it's it's cool right like I always had this this impression of industry being you know and wrongfully I'll admit but you know kind of you know, an, an old school type of environment in terms of, you know, you got machines and you got systems and, you know, maybe they're not, you know, that cool from a technology standpoint, but it's anything but, right? Like you walk into these plants and it's like the automation and the systems and the robotics, it's just mind blowing. It is absolutely mind blowing. And I think um, having that curiosity and, uh, you know, digging in to, you know, really learn, um, I think you'll open up, um, you know, any avenues that you want. So that's kind of number one you know, if I, if I could go on, I mean, I think ultimately, I think, you know, how do we, how do we help people? Like it's, you know, at the end of the day, you can have the greatest machines, the greatest software, still people, you know, at the end of the day, business is still people interacting with another, with one another, trying to, you know, develop things, create value, solve problems. And ultimately, you know, how do we have empathy for, for others and build success that way? I think, you know, that to me has always been, you know, a learning that, uh, you know, I'm constantly reminded of, it's like, Hey, wait a second. Like, you know, there's no problem that can't be solved as long as we figure out, you know, where everybody's coming from. How do we, how do we put, you know, kind of our minds together and, uh, you know, tools together to, to solve those problems. So I don't know those are kind of two things that come to mind as we're talking here today. They're great things. I mean, and to the people standpoint, Sandy, I am curious on this, any, any mentors for you that have helped you in your career and have you had a chance yet maybe to be a mentor to others to help groom them along their paths. 
Yeah, you know, I've had a lot of people, I've been very blessed um, to have a lot of, you know, leaders who have been, you know, very sharp from a from a business perspective, but I'll, I'll pick the obvious one, right? So uh, our CEO at Fix, James Novak, um, you know, we worked together back, uh, back in our days at BlackBerry. Um, I think he was, if not the youngest, one of the youngest VPs at the company. Um, and, you know, his leadership in terms of, you know, how we brought stakeholders together, groups together, um, you know, help shape ideas and, you know, always, uh, always keeping in mind, you know, how do we, um, you know, how do we do what's right for the company, but also do what's right for, you know, those who are involved um, in whatever decisions get, get taken. Um, you know, I think, uh, and he's continued to do that, obviously, here at Fix, right? Like uh, having that mindset, hey, how do we take care of our customers, but how do we also, you know, do what's right for, for the employees and the people? Um, it's always stuck with me. Um, and also, you know, the, the drive and the willingness to try new ideas. And, you know, just because something has been done one way for a long time doesn't mean, you know, you need to always do it that way. That's always kind of stuck with me from, you know, his leadership and, uh, you know, forever indebted and grateful, certainly for, uh, for some of those learnings. From, from my standpoint, um, to the extent I'm able to, you know, try to try to kind of share, you know, those learnings with, with others uh, to, to the best of my ability. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, to me, those are the, the key learnings. And, you know, again, James, James has always been pretty instrumental in that respect. For sure. I mean, it sounds like he's really been helpful for you. And it's great that you have that trust. And it sounds like that he was intentional about really helping you and pouring into your career and giving you good advice. And uh, so it's so important to find that that mentor that you can really go to and lean on and, and, and hats off to you there, man. That sounds great. Yeah, thank you. Now, how about the work that you do? See, I want to put this where you, you have that moment of joy. You're doing stuff that you just, you love. What are you doing in those moments? Uh, you know, it's an interesting question. I, I've thought about this um, quite a bit, actually, over the last number of months, right? Just kind of as an interesting mental exercise. And I had to sum it up kind of in one, you know, one sentence. I kind of feel like it's, you know, give me a complex problem and let me own it and let me try and solve it. Um, I mean, to me, you know, from a professional standpoint, you know, that, that's kind of exciting, right? You want to get out of bed. You want to put in extra hours. You want to think through things. Um, you know, if you're doing that to me, it's great. I, I'm, I actually don't really care what, you know, kind of what the actual subject matter is, but if it's something that people say, Hey, you know, this is a problem. And if we fix it, we solve it, you know, here are the results. And if we don't, you know, here's what happens. I kind of feel like, Hey, you know what, let me get involved in that. That's kind of exciting. Um, you know, you, you like to think you're going to have success, uh, you know, 10 times out of 10. I, I think in the real world that that's not always the case, but, uh, Nevertheless, you know, I kind of like to, you know, have the at-bats and take a few swings and uh, yeah, it uh, keeps life interesting. I hear you. I hear you. I love it. I love it. So how about some, with, for some of those at-bats, any highlights that, that you you look back across your career and you just smile on because I, I, I was part of that project or, or, or whatever it was. Any highlights you like to share? Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll share one from kind of, you know, the relatively recent past. Um you know, when I when I started at Fix, um, Fix Software, we, um, you know, we're we're a standalone CMMS platform. Mm -hmm. um, we always had this vision, and James, you know, James always had this vision, right? He's like, you know, we want to look a lot like Salesforce in terms of you know who we are as a software company. And of course, there's lots of things Salesforce has done well over the years, but one of the things they've done particularly well um, is really build out an ecosystem of partnerships where they could extend the value of, of the software in the industry. And we've always had this vision at Fix, you know, how do we do something similar um, in the industrial category? So we'll focus kind of on, you know, hey, being, being a good CMMS, which is, you know, great. It's a great tool for the maintenance department, tons of value, we can do a lot there. But there's gonna be a lot of areas where we're not necessarily going to invest and place big bets um, in, you know, adjacent categories, whether that be visualization software, IoT software, um, IoT hardware. So we, we actually, uh, and I was tasked with, you know, how do we build out a, a suite of partnerships to really help augment uh, our solution? So about a year and a half ago, you know, we kind of, you know, kind of went full bore uh, ahead with that. Um, we were able to launch, you know, the industry's first application exchange for industry specific to the, to the CMMS category. Uh, and we've had a lot of organizations, a lot of customers have a lot of success with Fix Plus partner solutions that we've introduced. So 
certainly very, very proud moment. I don't think the story is, uh, is done yet. You know, we're, we're continuing to build, we're continuing to grow, things continue to evolve over time. But, you know, we've, we've seen kind of the window uh, into, you know, kind of that, that vision. Um, and it's cool, you know, knowing that, you know, I've, I've played kind of a, a small part in it by, you know, really you know, helping broker the partnership between Fix and uh, and some of our some of our partners. So, you know, to me, that um, you know is is always going to be a highlight because you know you're kind of doing something you know a first, yeah. right? And uh, you know, doing a first is always kind of exciting. That's right, because nobody's ever been down that road. Uh, that's wonderful, great, great highlight. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, thank you. So let's let's we've talked about Fix, the wonderful things you're doing in your career. We know, no doubt, you you have so much more to come in, in the future. But I like to take a, a turn and let's talk about Sandy outside of work. So, what are some hobbies you enjoy? What, what do you enjoy doing for fun? So I got got two small kids. Got a son who's six, uh, six and a half, I guess, and a daughter who's sixteen months old. And honestly, when I'm not uh, you know doing stuff for Fix. Um, they keep me on my toes, keep me busy, whether it be, you know, Brazilian jiu-jitsu with my son or playing in the yard. Um, you know, honestly, like that's, uh, they're my, they're my life. Uh, you know, my, my wife and I just, uh, absolutely love spending time as a family and just being outside. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. You don't always have to be doing something specific, but you know, when we're together and we're outside and we're, you know, doing things as a family, um, you know, nothing could be better than that. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, feel very uh, blessed, very fortunate to, uh, you know, have such a wonderful family. And uh, yeah, they, they keep me on my toes. That's for sure. I hear you. Now, do you, now what, what was it your son's into again? He's into Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Brazilian so, jiu-jitsu. Okay. Yeah, you know, give him, give him a couple of years, right? He'll be uh, he'll be taking me down. Okay. Uh, so he's breaking boards yet? That's what I was wondering. How, how intense yeah, not, is not, it? Yeah, not yet. Hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully the drywall will, will hold up for the next few years, right? But, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so far, so good. Fingers crossed. Now, did he... Now, did he pick that up from you? Did you enjoy it? Did you learn that? I mean, where where did that come from? You know, it's funny. It didn't come from me, right? But it's one of those things. And I think, you know, any of the fathers out there, you can probably relate, right? Like all the things that you kind of think, hey, you know what? It would have been cool to have learned a martial art or it would have been cool to do this and that. Yeah. You know, you always kind of think, hey, you know what? Like, it'd be cool if I could help my kids do the things that, you know, maybe I I didn't do that, you know, I think would be would be good, right? I think we're all... I don't know. I think most people probably, you know, they, they want their kids to, you know, have it better than they had it. And I had it pretty great. No complaints. That's for sure. But, uh, you know, so you kind of, you know, in, in the same vein, right. Um, uh, picking up a martial art, I think is a great skill, great discipline. Um, and, uh, yeah, we got, got him involved and, uh, just absolutely, uh, absolutely loves it. So, so it's good. That's great. That is so awesome. Now, now you said you're 18 month old as a girl. So yeah. as, as a, as a girl dad, just uh, some fair warning, uh, you know, you're the hero, play that hero for a long time. Uh, you know, my, my, I'm still have a minor eight and 10, so, uh, I'm still the hero right now, but at some point I'm sure it'll shift to the villain, but there's nothing like being a girl dad either, man. So it's great to, uh, you know, to have that. Thank you for sharing that. Anything else about your family you like to share is the rest of your family still in Toronto? Yeah, my, my, my parents, my siblings still up in Toronto. Okay. Um, last last year and a half been a bit tricky with uh, with traveling and so mm -hmm. forth. But, um, you know, uh, thank God for modern technology, right? You got FaceTime, you got, um, you know, you, you, you can, it's not, it's not the same, of course, but, uh, you know, it's a heck of a lot better than the alternative. So, That's right. um, yeah, certainly great, grateful for that. Love it. I love it. Now, how about personal stuff you enjoy consuming? It could be podcasts or books or just things on YouTube or Netflix, whatever it may be. Anything that you that you enjoy, uh, personal or professional, that uh, you think other listeners may may like to check out? Yeah, I think you know some the odd business podcast, like you know the, some of the Simon Sinek stuff's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of kind of really enjoy that. I like to, to read a bunch of things online, articles from different different sources, right? Just about industry and technology. I can't think of necessarily, you know, one specific one that I can say, Hey, you know what, this is my top favorite. I kind of, you know, I like to, you know, kind of consume content from a variety of different resources and helps me formulate different opinions and so forth. But, uh, you know, it's amazing. Like there's just so much great content out there, um, at your fingertips, right? Like, uh, you know, I, I grew up in the days when, uh, you know, I used the yellow pages and fax machines. Uh, and I remember going to my dad's office as a kid and, uh, 
you know, like, um, you know, there was no internet back then. And, uh, you know, life was a lot different. You had, you know, cassette tapes if you wanted to listen to something. So, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty remarkable how much great stuff is out there at our fingertips these days, uh, really puts it in perspective. No doubt. No doubt. Now I really want to get to know you a little bit better here. So we're going to play a lightning round, ask you a bunch of random stuff, just fire away, whatever comes to mind. Okay. All right. All right. So from Toronto, let's see. I'm anxious to see favorite food. Chocolate. All right. My man. I love it. We are on the same page there. How about adult beverage? You know, some good craft beer um, hits the spot. Any any particular one? If you had to narrow it down to to a top, any one stand Yeah, something out? probably something from Bell's Brewery out in Michigan. Okay. Um, yeah, always a always a favorite. Bell's founders, some cool. good stuff. Yeah. So what's on your nightstand? What's on my nightstand? Um, you're gonna laugh at me, but uh, a a lamp and a charging cord from my phone. <laughs> <laughs> the only other thing i have is a charging cord for my watch so i mean I, <laughs> there, there you too. go <laughs> i do have a few books but yeah uh how about favorite app i mean you're a software guy so what what app could you not live without what app could i not live without accuweather you know AccuWeather. I, I, I yeah you know i was at a conference an iot conference a year and a half ago I had a chance to meet uh dr joel myers i think it's dr joel myers founder of accuweather nice. and he gave it he gave a talk i'm mean, here i'm diverting but he gave a talk about you know big data and its application and weather and i had no idea kind of all the science and the technology that goes into weather forecasting and when they say they're the most accurate i actually believe it like it's pretty cool how they built it out so anyways AccuWeather, great app, and uh, yeah, it was kind of cool getting to getting to meet uh, Mr. Myers. That sounds awesome for sure. How about uh, a guilty pleasure? Guilty pleasure, I you know I, when we did the prep for this, I was thinking about it. I you know, gosh, I couldn't come up with one. Like it's uh, it's interesting. Like you know, literally, you know, wake up in the morning. I like to rise pretty early. You know, five thirty. Um, you know, we we have our breakfast as a family. Get to work and. And then after work, like it's family time again and you, you go to bed before you know it. So I don't know. Like, I don't know if uh, there's there's a guilty pleasure out there, but uh, I might have to come back to you on that one. So uh, hopefully you'll have me on again at some point. Oh, for, for sure. For sure. And I'm thinking for you, though, based off your first answer being chocolate, there's got to be a guilty pleasure of chocolate, you know, you know, mixed in there at some point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, uh, I, I, I'm sure, right? They probably consume too much ice cream or something. <laughs> How about a, uh, a destination, somewhere you got to go one day that you haven't been to yet? Yeah, it's uh, that's a good one. You know, I, I'm i going to go with Hawaii. Okay. You know, I mean, sounds like it's, what, 75, 80 degrees uh, okay. every day, sun shining. You got the mountains, you got the beach. Someone told me that there's no snakes in Hawaii. I lived in Florida for two years and there were snakes on our property all the time. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't mind nice weather and no snakes. So I'll go with Hawaii. Uh, we went, we did our honeymoon there. And uh, I will tell you, if you can ever get a chance to go, I highly recommend. We went to Maui and you're right, in the mountains. Uh, we, we did a sunrise on top of a, a volcano, you know, seeing the sunrise, the, the sunset on the beach. Uh, the weather's perfect and I did not see a snake. So that was a good. <laughs> A good score. <laughs> Very good. How about someplace you have been that you that you really recommend others? Yeah, you know, on, on our honeymoon, we actually did a driving tour of the Swiss Alps. Um, oh. I'd never been to, to Switzerland, but um, before that, and you know, you, you look at the pictures, and you know, it's interesting. And I look back at the pictures, and the pictures never do it justice. Like yeah. how breathtaking um, it is when you're at the you know, the peaks uh, and you're in the glaciers and you see the roads like kind of winding their way through the mountains. And um, it was just mind blowing. It was just such a, you know, otherworldly experience. And, you know, again, feel so fortunate to be here in the United States, but I mean, as a trip, it was unbelievable. It was, yeah, just like something I'll never, ever forget. Sounds so awesome. So awesome. All right. Last one. Uh, Pets, dogs or cats? dogs amen all right you got it right there is only one right answer so good job sam that's right <laughs> <laughs> now, any special breeds anything any, any type of dog in particular you know we, we had we had dachshunds growing up as a kid and then we made a dramatic shift to a black lab oh. and the black lab was like she was just the most incredible dog intelligent affectionate 
Um, so I'm going to, my money's on, on the labs right now. Um, you know, they're just such great dogs. They are, they are for sure. Now how about, you know, we call it eco S Y Sandy. It's been, it's been a blast getting to know you, but I love to, to wrap up to understand what's, what's your passion about. So if somebody want to know what your personal why is, what would it be? Yeah. You know, it's funny. My wife, um, first time we met, you know, we were having a discussion. She asked, what's your, what are you passionate about? And I actually had to think about it for a couple of minutes. And I answered saying, I'm actually passionate about everything because you know what, like at the end of the day, kind of, it doesn't matter in my opinion, you know, what we're doing, but if we're engaged and we're having fun and we're doing with the people that we're close to, then you know what, like all the other stuff is, you know, noise or it's peripheral. Um, so you know what, like, man, I just think, you know, enjoy, enjoy the moments, enjoy the life, you know, the time, you know, I, I realized over the weekend, like the time flies and, um, you know, we might as well, might as well spend it kind of getting engaged and, uh, you know, enjoying the moment and, uh, you know, live in the moment. So, um, so there you have it. There you have it. Well, one thing for sure saying, I have definitely enjoyed the moments with you. It's been a blast getting to know you and, and for what you shared with us today and, uh, just getting to know a little bit more, you know, outside of work, the things that you are passionate about. Best wish you nothing but the best with that little girl and your son. And it sounds like you got a, a fun road ahead of you, my friend. Thank you so much, Chris. Really appreciate it. Uh, really glad to be on. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. And for our listeners who want to connect with Sandy, just check out our show notes. We'll have a link to connect with him directly on LinkedIn, as well as, you know, Fix Software and, and any other of the the resources that, that we spoke about today. So Sandy, thank you again. And we hope you have a wonderful day, sir. Thank you so much, Chris. Really appreciate it. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit EcoSY.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com. 